to the Eagle Eye Podcast. The number one show to bring you all things Club America in English. From tactical analysis to player updates. We've got you covered on all the latest news on Las Aguilas. Now, let's start the show. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Eagle Eye Podcast. I am your host, Ivan. We got plenty to talk about. Obviously, we're going to be discussing the injury woes that are going in and around America right now. Uh, we'll get you guys up to date with everything club news related. And then, of course, we'll get you guys up to date with a preview for the game against Atletico San Luis. And joining me today to do all of that is a panel of experts it is none other than returning guest uh mr brian el carnicero brian how are you good thank you for having me again well, always always glad to have you and joining us from the other side of the country is none other than new york ferry resident mr christian rosendo christian how are we I'm doing well thank you for inviting me back because you know you you haven't had me on the past couple of weeks I think it's because you've been stuck in traffic for the past couple of weeks. You barely yeah, got home happened, since yeah. since two weeks ago. True, true. So, uh, no, happy to be back. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Um, happy to share the the podcast panel with Brian once again. Uh, I think it's been a while, so this should be fun. All right. Boxing gloves are going to be coming off once we start talking yeah. Fidalgo. Christian should have wore a different <laughs> shirt. But talking about people on the coast to coast, it is none other than uh, Chris Rivera himself joining us to make it a four man group tonight. Chris, how are you, my friend? Good, bro. It's still sunny out. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, I don't know huh? If it's for everyone else, but for us, it's still sunny out, and usually it's it's uh, already dark. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We're, get, we're getting there. We're getting close. Time changes. Crazy things. But gentlemen, we have had a roller coaster of news flowing in and out of the world of Las Islas in America. Obviously, with the international break, we thought that it was going to be a blessing for our players to get some rest, get maybe some minutes to stay in rhythm, and um, hopefully give some of the youngsters a look. Turns out it wasn't actually the case. Um, it probably is the worst case scenario for America in this international uh, international break. We lose Alvaro Fidalgo and Alejandro Sendejas to muscle injuries because of the friendly against Cruz Azul. That's step up, uh, not step up, Dignity Health Sports Park. And uh, we lose, yeah, there used to be all these names. And also we lose Julian Quinones because of an injury with the Mexican national team. As of right now, everyone else is in the clear. I believe... Uh, Lichnowski and Cáceres and um, who else? Brian right. Rodriguez have already officially played their games, which means we're in the clear, but we do end up losing three players and add on top of that the injury of Diego Valdez. How are you guys feeling knowing that we're losing very key players coming into another chaotic two weeks of America football? I'll throw it to you first, Brian. Well, I mean, to have more players hurt in a friendly, that's a little concerning. And now you have to look forward to the next time we have these things happen. I'm wondering if they're even going to play any starters um, in those international break friendlies. Because that's, you already had Valdez gone. Quinones went to the national team, which I don't, I didn't see him get injured. I didn't see him stumbling or anything. So, I don't know how severe that is. And then you have two with a friendly. It's that that now that's concerning because those are starters too. Yeah, they're all starters. So that's why, you know, we start ringing the, those alarm bells, Christian. What's what's going on? Why are we why are we in this pickle? I mean, it's I I think Chris alluded to it in our chat. It's just that they these starters are playing more minutes than what they're supposed to be. Um like these friendlies are just for keeping players in rhythm, right? Uh, it is not, it's not for, you know, going out there and getting the win. Uh, I think these are the games that we need to test the youngsters in, maybe see where we can fill a hole uh, or a gap in the squad. 
Um, it's not meant for for regulars like Fidalgos and Dejas, Jonathan dos Santos, right? So, um, I think I think we should take this as a kind of a lesson for for for, for future friendlies, um, especially now that we're in the final stretch of the season. These are the most two crucial months of the whole season. So hopefully, um, this doesn't happen again, and hopefully, we can recover them as soon as possible. Chris, do you think that Andre Jardine is at fault here for for what happened? Obviously, he doesn't know that these players are going to get injured, but I, I'm assuming that there's some data, something to indicate that these players needed some bit of rest, that they were close to maybe getting an injury. You saw that game on Sunday, how they were being played. It was nowhere near a friendly, and it didn't look like both teams were kind of holding back. Do you think that there was a mistake there by the managerial side to risk these starters and then and, and play them in... In, in in this type of environment? Yes. You have to blame someone and you're going to have to blame coaching for this. Because to me, you always hear this, uh, youngster should get an opportunity, right? I mean, what did I say in our group chat right away? You know, it's bad when Luis Fuentes is our starting center back. Like, there's no 16-year-old. Like, if there's no one in the older uh category put someone else you know like there's there's no way that that you're just gonna just put all the, the the subs or the starters out there and then be surprised that there's injuries you're rotating them throughout the whole season right and who's the two players that get injured the ones that he, that he hardly rotates is, is that really surprising to you guys like we're human beings i know people say oh if they were in europe they play in europe they're 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 rotating a lot and they're, they're using their academies they're not doing that in Mexico, and at least we aren't. And to me, it was just one of those things where it's just like it's going to happen. Like you said, it was a very uh, physical game, which isn't surprising because Azul is going to try to beat us every single time because they really do hate us. Th that coach that they have has already rubbed off on, uh, wrong on, on a lot of coaches in Mexico, right? So, like, what did we expect? Even against us, what what they were trying to fight Cabecita, who was it? Or one of the coaches, coaches that was trying to fight him after the game. Yeah, after the game. Came in. And then who was it? Uh, Sepulveda was all showing off the, their badge and everything. Like, we knew there was something there. I know people say, like, oh, it, what happens in the field stays in the field. But let, let's be honest. There's, there's players that do take it to uh, personal, you know. And just for us to put Fidalgo out there and, and Sendeja, it's just stupid, bro. Like, all this rotation and and you, you risk it for a friendly and then like they didn't even put that many youngsters out there that I remember. I don't even like I remember two midfielders. That's it. I mean, maybe you guys have a better memory than I do, but they weren't like you know they weren't putting in a heavy uh, academy player base out there. So for me, it's just it's pointless. I understand. Yes, like rhythm. But you could keep rhythm by keeping them in Mexico and having them play against the, the same academy teams, you know? Like, you don't have to go and have these games. I get it. You're selling out. You're, you're selling to to the to, to the Americans or, or wherever you want to label us, right? You're, you're selling us this game because you're trying to make – sell tickets. I get that. In the end of the day, I'm sure everyone that went into that, to that stadium will sit here and say, as long as our team is healthy, that's all that matters. You guys could put in Mosombito for 90 minutes, you know, or, or whoever, and they'll be okay with it. So for me, it's think... just very, like, like I don't know. I, I have to blame Jardine and his staff for that because, like I said, all that rotating because of our schedule for, for you to lose players, right? And, and there's going to be rotations for this uh, Friday too. So it's like, what are we doing? Why, why like, if, if, if you're just saying, oh, uh, I had to pick uh, either this is friendly or, or the or the Friday game, well, make them play the Friday. At least it means something, right? At least if you, if you, lose, if you lose players on that, hey, it's an official game it's in, 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 in our schedule. Cool, you know, it happens. But to a friendly, it just it's just very annoying to me. Well, Brian, I think it's safe to say that Chris is, out of all of us, the most ex uh, heated at the moment in regards to <laughs> in in to regards to this topic. I mean, when you asked guys, about you guys, know my opinion on on all that. You know, you yeah, guys know my opinion on all that. That I'm just like more on friendly. But you make a good. Like, I understand. You make a good point. Official games, but not 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 friendlies. I just don't. I just don't understand what what the purpose is to play, whether it's to their national teams or to 
or to uh, uh, club friendly in the state. I just don't understand it. You're going to sell tickets regardless. Yeah, but I think I think the reason we see this type of game is because when asked uh, when they asked Harine in regards to this game and to what uh, they can expect, he said, you know, well, we're treating this game as just any other regular game in the season. We're trying to keep rhythm. And in order to keep rhythm, you have to kind of play to the same intensity, to the same level. At least that's kind of what his ideology was, Brian, when they asked him this question. And you saw it from the get-go, from the starting 11. He put possibly the best starting 11 that he had at his disposal. What I was shocked at was that they got more than 45 minutes under their belts. Yeah, that shocks me too, especially for a nothing friendly. Like it's not even like a, a summer friendly in between seasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so going to the point of that, I think it should be reversed. I think you got to go really young, like bring a lot of young guys. And then if you want to throw in a regular towards the last 12 minutes, you know, fans can still say they saw a first team player, but the energy of that game is going to be different. The flow of the game is going to be different. Um, yeah. And with already what we saw too, uh, you have two injuries in that. And then Quinones has some sort of injury too. It, it, that just piles up. And now you're looking at a, a league game coming in and then, in a, you know, North American, you know, tournament that's important. That's your goal. So now we're kind of scratching our heads like we went from losing a playmaker to losing more starters. And now it's like, now, now there's too many more question marks coming into this, you know, upcoming game and beyond that. No, absolutely, absolutely. Christian, you know, Brian mentions it. We go from losing not one uh, attacking midfielder or creative midfielder, but now you go to losing two, potentially three, if you put some Nekas in that same category. I mean, from a scale of one to ten, how bad is it right now for America? Should we panic as much as we're panicking? Or do you think that, okay, let's 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 kind of put a little bit of, of a halt to this, and it's not as bad as it looks at first sight? Right. Um. So, I mean, considering of all the reports that we've seen about the injuries of each player, I don't think there is too much pain to go into. I think um, Sendejas and Fidalgo are out for a minimum of two weeks or maximum of two weeks. I'm sorry. Um, Quinones wasn't actually like like Brian said, I don't think he was actually injured. Maybe just like a little knock, but they preferred not to play him in case it got worse because he was on the bench on Sunday night and he was warming up. Um, it's just that the game just got out of hand, and obviously we, there was no we were coming back, so that's why he was not going to be in there, right? Um, so I think that maybe how to now kind of be a little more reserved with him also and not playing Friday, knowing that we have that international tie no. on Tuesday night. Um, so I mean, in regards to to, to I guess Julian and um and Valdez, because Valdez I thought was uh was with training with the group today. I thought he was uh, he was clear today. Uh, you know, returning to practice, so. Um, I guess in terms of just like the midfield, I mean, you have Richard Sanchez there. I mean, you know, he, he he's been crying for for uh, for, for his for line starting eleven. So maybe maybe Friday could be his chance to kind of kind of show show how to know that he still has it. Um, then you throw in Naveda in there, right? If Jonathan can't can't go or isn't at a hundred, and then we all want to see Javido a little bit more. So I think Friday is a perfect matchup to do that. You know. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um, I mean, just from what, the little sample sizes that we got against Cruz Azul and this friendly, I think there is some hope that, okay, even with these players out, there is something tangible to kind of walk walk, walk into these next couple of games and get results. Um, most notably, the CONCACAF Champions Cup one, right? Because I don't think any of us are worried too much of what happens on Friday against San Luis. And we'll get into it and as to, you know, what we want to see. But at the end of the day, I don't think any of us would be upset with that game kind of being a throwaway game and kind of getting your best players ready for the game on Tuesday against New England. No, of course. And you have to, seeing how you're not traveling in this one. You're actually, right. you're, you're at home. You're at the Azteca against a favorable opponent where you can possibly get the job done. And I think we have the depth for it. I think we have the players for it. Now, how does that starting 11 look like? We'll get into it a little bit later, but I think you're right, Christian. There's there's kind of some saving grace for America. You mentioned it. Um, Diego Valdez did train with the team. I don't expect him to play as a starter 
against yeah, San Luis, I, I would imagine he would get some minutes off the bench just to get him back into the rhythm of things. Um, and another player that was injured that we kind of didn't really mention, but looks to be 100% clear now also is Israel Reyes. So, right. you know, he looks like he's going to be back in shape. So what is he going to be playing? Most likely that right back's position. But again, another player to kind of put in the healthy category. And now the real question mark is most likely going to be obviously Fidalgo and Sendejas because all signs point to Quinones maybe being ready, maybe not for this game, but should be ready for the New England game. So in that best case scenario, it sounds like we're only down two players and only for an extensive amount of about 10 to 15 days. Brian, you probably get them back in about two days. So Still waiting on my plane. <laughs> You're still working out the details. I don't know why they're taking this long. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the injury update. Um, it is worrisome, but at the same time, I think this is what we talked about at the beginning of the season at, as to why the squad depth was so important as to why America retaining the squad that won the, the, the 14th rolling over into this season was so vital because you needed to have cohesion, cohesion. You needed to have familiarity and you needed to have a unit in where you can swap players in and out and they can function regardless of, of who's starting. And I guess the real test is going to be on, on Friday and we'll find out whether or not they're capable of getting the job done. So interesting, you know, I'll ask this. Do you guys think we still have the squad depth to be okay, regardless of these injuries? I think Christian, I you're saying yes. Them. Yeah, I think we do. For the next two weeks? Yes. I'll, yeah. I'll say this, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. It's not about the depth, but the inform from some, how informed these players are. Because I look at a player like Richard Sanchez, to me personally, he's been awful for a good minute. And I had just not been satisfied with him at all. Like, for me, he's one of those players that I would sell this summer. And there's going to be a lot of sales, or at least it feels like it, right? And that's the guy who I would not hesitate to get rid of. Because when you saw him in that in that third classical, or, yeah, the third classical on Valdez came, uh, uh, got injured, and Richard got, uh, came in, he didn't do anything. So, for me, it's not about necessarily death, but it's – how informed some of these players are, right? Uh, I, today I've seen people talk about Brian Rodriguez, about how horrible he's been. I don't think he's been that bad, but uh, again, you know, how informed these players could be. And I think that's why you use this game on on Friday against San Luis to maybe try to get catch them up to speed, right? Your Richards and your Bryans to kind of come in, get 90 minutes under their belt, and knowing if you're going to utilize them come... Uh, come Tuesday against New England, then you know it's 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 not like you're just plugging them in without any minutes to to back it up. So I I agree with you. Richard has not been good, and even in the friendly against Cruz Azul, he was a shadow of what he used to be. But he still understands the system. He kind of understands the role, and I feel like if anyone was gonna try to come in and quote unquote fill Fidalgo's shoes. You would want probably the player that played alongside him the longest and kind of understands his position the best. So I think that, you know, there's there's some positive in in still having him here for the meanwhile. Um, but like I said, look, it's it's not like we're looking at this from a long term perspective, Brian. We're looking at this kind of short term, two weeks. Can we grind it out with the players at our disposal, knowing that we have two very important players that aren't going to be available? And I think the consensus here is that we're all saying yes. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at short term, uh, I mean, at least you're not looking at a bigger player. No offense to, you know, San Luis coming up. If you're going to have injuries, that's kind of like the game you want to have going into the next, you know, cup um, following that. And I think America has enough to at minimum get a point out of that. And I know everybody wants three points, but I won't necessarily lose sleep over a draw given the circumstances as long as everybody goes into the next game a little bit more healthy a little bit more in rhythm maybe one or two players can kind of stand out and that would be a, a positive from for me um, and I think they can do that especially since 
a lot of these injuries are not, you know, very severe. Um, it just, it's unfortunate timing. Absolutely. I would agree with that. AP Jr. saying, I blame Banos for even making the unnecessary friendly game, shaking my head. And Chris Ramirez saying, save everything for that Tuesday game. I think we're all in consensus with Chris right there. Um, AP Jr., we got to still make tickets. We still got to make revenue somehow. And I think with the international break, it's, it's a perfect opportunity to come and, and sell the Americans, you know, that glorious stream of watching America play. So it's unfortunate, um, but it's just kind of the norm now at, at this point, right? International breaks means tour Aguilas in, in motion. So it's a way to keep the ball rolling and, and keep that money flowing. So um, let's talk actually news regarding these players. A lot of announcements regarding contract extensions were announced by America throughout this international break. Everyone was expecting a specific player to be announced, quote-unquote Henry Martin. It hasn't happened yet, but today news broke that they are on the verge of finalizing this. It's almost down to pen and paper. It looks like they've gotten the years and they've gotten the salary. Now it's just finalizing all the details, dotting their I's and crossing their T's, and it looks like we might have a Henry Bomba for another three years but before we speculate on that i want to hear you guys' take malagon sebastian casades and chava reyes all extended for more for three more years well deserved merited i don't know i'm curious to hear what your guys' opinion on in regards to the extension of um of these players i thought it was a great thing that they signed malagon for another three years i was from I, that was the one I was the most happiest about in regards to extensions, but I'll hear you guys' opinion in regards to the rest. So, Chris, how how did you look at all this? I loved it. I think it's a, it's good to not lose players, right? It it doesn't guarantee they're going to be here for the next uh, the next three years, right? If I'm not mistaken, the Casit uh, extension was more to like secure a a good. Uh, amount of uh of of the purchase you know uh, i think it, it, it's perfect I, even chava reyes I, I don't mind him on the team because you have a player at least that could play two positions and that could be a goal scorer, scorer at times you know and malagon to me i think that's a that's a goalkeeper you need to keep for the rest of his career as long as he maintains his level he's a the he's gonna he, arguably right now he's the best keeper in mexico so you know I, I I love it. I love all three signings or or extensions. I mean, Christian. Yeah, I think um I think each of them served a different purpose, which I'm I'm happy about it. Obviously, Malagón being the best keeper in Mexico right now, um you know well well deserved extension. I think uh, I think everyone was happy with that. Chavar Reyes as a depth player, you're gonna need Mexican players going forward, especially with the extranjero rule reducing by one. So it's not it's not it's not a bad idea to have good depth players that know their role, that know their position in the team, right? That won't really make a fuss about it. So good play, good, good, good extension there. And then Casares was more tailored to probably selling him this summer. Um, I think there's been a lot of rumors even in the past transfer window, and he, he has a good Copa America this summer. There might be potential eyes on him, so it's just for America to make some money because he was going to be a free agent at the end of this year. So all three extensions were great. Uh, I think A-plus job by the board on that one. Do you agree right there, Brian? A's across all all the board? Um, I think two were very necessary. Obviously, Casares and your number one keeper. Um, Chava Reyes, I mean, I'll give it a C. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to give it all A's, but yeah, for sure. You want to make money. Uh, Casares, I don't think he's going to be staying too much longer. Um, and then Malagón is the number one. You, you're just going to lock him in, so... Uh, that was smart, in my opinion. So I think they're 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 you know they're they're useful useful moves. So um, there's no negative on that. Absolutely, and I should have done my my research here, but Malagón was the one that surprised me the most because I didn't have any anywhere on my notes that his contract was coming up to an end. So I was curious as to if they just looked at that, they saw his form, they saw how good he was, and the potential, you know, of him being a 
maybe even a starter for the World Cup that you're thinking might be some eyes on this guy, might be able to capitalize on something here. So let's extend him for a little bit longer. Yeah, so. I mean, he just he's not even like been in there for a very, very long time. So it's, you know. Um, yeah, because he came you know, like last season. So yeah, that, that that's that's what surprises me that you get extended. Like you know, I would imagine he came with like a three year contract. Yeah, unless there and was a must have bumped them like, up. If you get if you if they get the title, you know, then we'll we'll talk right. about it. There, there, that could have been a, a factor into it too. But yeah, <laughs> Ricardo over here saying Ivan is fuming at all the love Malagon is getting. No, absolutely not, Ricardo. Look, uh, everyone knows that Ocho is forever going to be my number one keeper, but I'm not blind. <laughs> Only when I want to be. Um, Which is I, he I, has I, glasses on. I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Today I have my glasses on, on so, I, so I can't. I can't knock it. But no you know, Malagon, they're just, they're just useless glasses. <laughs> there, yeah, no, they literally are. They're blue light glasses. <laughs> but. Um, no, I mean, the reality is Malangon has just been tremendous. I, I would say probably top three players for us this season, right? And even though he had a stinker against Chivas, he wasn't the only one. It was just everyone else had a bad night. So happy with that one. Like I said, that one threw me off by the most. Um, but obviously the big one we're all expecting and the big one everyone's wanting to hear is Henry Martin. It looks like that's almost just getting across the finish line. If America is able to secure him up to 2027, like the rumors say, Brian, what do you, how do you grade that? I mean, given his role with the team, you have to give that a high grade. The next thing is obviously things that come into play here is age. Cause you know, you look at a guy who bloomed kind of late Peralta around that. And yeah. by the end of that contract, that's kind of where Peralta was just kind of, Mm -hmm. gone so how useful will he be towards the end of that who knows but you at least want him for the next upcoming year or so so um i agree that you, you want to get that done because he's still going to be very very useful and needed on this team given his impact for sure especially in that and he is the, the captain recent, yeah yeah especially in the recent classically you got a goal he was you know influential in, in, in that game so yeah he's he's definitely going to be needed at least in the short term like a year or so for sure Christian, how do you feel about this? You know, it's it's Dylan's man, Mr. Henry the Bomba himself. Obviously, a little bit of a dip, but it's kind of been norm, normal for Henry to kind of be off form whenever he has all these injuries, right? Maybe something to kind of think about as well. But he does seem to turn it on when we need him the most. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I think everything what Brian said is true. I think that we need we need to kind of be... A little weary, and I think maybe that's why it's taking so long. I think why the back and forth, because the man's going to be 32 this year, right? And, you know, if we give him another three years, probably going to be around 35, 36, give around take. So, um, you know, you you, you got to see, like, you you, you got to make smart moves. You got to make smart moves. And right now it's paying off because right now we, he is our number one striker. He is the, one of the best players on the team, the captain. So it does make sense, but I think that America is becoming a little bit smarter in how they handle these extensions. Um, and making sure that they don't get, I guess, blindsided or, you know, I want to say a different word, but I can't right now, um, in the <laughs> long run. So, you know what I mean? So I, uh, but right now though, I think everyone's points are hitting that he is a very important player. Um, very, got very important presence in the locker room, which is needed. Um, so I, I think, I think I, I agree with Brian. We need to get this done as soon as possible. I'll just weary on the years and the amount of money you're going to pay him though, because like I said, age is a factor. And, uh, I think that needs to be taken into consideration. Well, I think it's fair to say that he's probably going to be the best paid player in America. But I think if anyone deserved it, it most likely was Henry Martin. So, I mean, we'll see. Well, that will put him out to 2027, like I said, just a year after the World Cup. And then I assume America might part ways with him or maybe sign him again. But with a lower wage, I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I think he'd venture off elsewhere. Um, but we'll see. I mean, a lot of things can happen from here to there. Um just kind of, kind of be mindful, Chris. Who is one player that has yet to rent, uh, to renew that you feel like deserves it? Maybe a Jonathan dos Santos, maybe um, a Luis Fuentes, maybe. No. <laughs> I'm just throwing out names here. <laughs> uh, to me, it's Sendejas. I think 
Like, to me, he's the second engine of this team. I think, I know that he said it after the Clásico that they renewed him, but it hasn't been official. So that's who I think should probably get renewed. I I, I think uh, if you're going to think from a, from a selling standpoint, maybe, uh, damn, it's really hard to really say who. I mean, I don't know, Diego Valdez maybe, if you're trying to sell, but. I think Sendejas is probably the, the, the most logical, right? Because he's, what, 25 yeah. years old? He, 26. You're talking mm-hmm. three. Yeah, so, like, you still give him a three-, four-year contract. You're still going to get, you know, his prime. While you look at Jona, like, you're really only giving him a year, right? You're, Fuentes, a year, maybe six months. Fuentes has been on that six-month contract for, like, <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> two <real>. years now. <laughs> Yes, so to me, it's Sendejas and maybe Naveda. I, I don't know how you guys feel about him. I know how Brian feels about him. You know, like he's very, he, he looks at him as a very promising player. But for me, maybe Naveda is a guy that you want to keep around, even if he doesn't like blossom into what we thought he would turn into. I still think he's he could be a very reliable death player for, for many years and an academy player that never hurts to have, you know. Herman Villa was one of those players. I compared to Herman Villa way too much, but. That's just the way I see him, like a Herman Villa type player. Maybe he won't beat Herman Villa to this club, but just you know that academy player that's going to be there for many years. I just don't see the same grit and the same fear that Herman Villa would invoke on other players. Never before looks like the injury, he was like that. Before the injury, he was like that, and then he got injured, and then and then it just went. And down. now we're here. All right. Yeah. Well, those are your. I'm on uh, too. Ramon Juarez too. Oh yeah, know no, yeah. Contract oh, no, yeah. Situation. You know, that's um, another player that, that that we should probably extend, give him a good contract. You know, and that's a player that I do think could make the jump to to Europe because he's like we always talk about super reliable. You know, maybe he's not like a super prospect, but a, a reliable player like that could be could fit anywhere in the world, in my opinion. Even if he doesn't hit elite level, he could super. He's super reliable. Yeah, I agree. I think we all like Juarez and definitely deserves um, to get another contract whenever that does come to an expiring end. Um, Ricardo saying, not renewed, but America needs to buy Lichnowski from Chiqui Tigres. I'm on the fence on this one still. Um, I don't know. Only because of the fact that you're losing an international slot next season. Um, So you really have to count your numbers in that sense. So, I don't know. I'm. I say we we hold on to that until about the end of the season. No, Brian. Yeah, I'd wait. I kind of want to wait on that one for sure. But um, pointing yeah. out to a comment here about the U23, Ramon did play and Lara. Um, he played. <laughs> Lara played terrible. <laughs> um, he tried to uh, play. But, but, but Ramon, listen, that Argentina team was nothing to sneeze at. And especially in that second game, he was cutting out plays, cutting out passes, really smart, not playing, you know, too aggressive or anything. Really liked what I saw from him. Um, the first game, there was mistakes by Mexico all over the place, and you can't pinpoint that on him. But um, he, he's not injured, so that's good. He's healthy, and he looked, especially in that second game, really good. I think he got about 55, 60 minutes in that. So that's promising because that was not an easy team to play. Oh look! All promising signs for Ramon Juarez. We keep giving him his flowers because he deserves them. Yeah, Just having them never seems to kind of want to <laughs> keep him in that starting eleven role. Yeah, usually, but he, I do expect he, him to get minutes against Sunday. Yeah, he then follows with kind of a stinker because we did praise him in the one. Oh game yeah, he did that. He definitely. <laughs> but everyone, everyone looked like trash in that. To be honest, yeah, they, but, we look terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Dylan saying, "I need to give Lara a raise." <laughs> I don't maybe he needs some incentive I, I don't know but I don't know what that man needs but he he can now no, he can no longer be an America player I'm sorry just yeah. they just can't they, they should give him yeah, a raise when out. he gets rid of that bad bunny tattoo that, that, that's when they should pay they're gonna have to give him a raise so he can pay for the removal so but all right gentlemen that is kind of the news and club updates that we have regarding America the injuries updates in regards to contracts. Christian, you got anything else in your books? 
Mm, no, I think we talked on Igor that it's not. There's no longer a loan extension. If we do want him back on the squad, we do have to negotiate with Tigres. Um, so I do yep. agree with you guys on that point. Where um, I think we bring him back only for the right price. Um, and and go from there because like you know he's he's also getting up there in age. Um, I think we'll be thirty one or thirty this this summer. Um, so I guess you gotta really really calculate how how you want how you want to play that and also. Chicote Calderon, that's a one-year loan, or we only bought him for one year. He was a free agent. No, we he was a free bought agent. him for one year. For one year. That's something we, we we may want to revisit at the end of the at the end of the season, maybe. I don't know. You guys thoughts on that? I know Chris loves Chicote. Loves Chicote. <laughs> I would love Chicote. him, but but I told you he wasn't bad. He's not a bad player. He just wasn't a stinky team, and I'm sure no one's going to debate that. No, yeah, I'll never did. No, we'll I'll never debate with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens, but yeah, it's a, you know something to keep an eye on in in this summer's ever moving world of of transfers for Las Aguilas and America. We expect a big summer, and not just game wise, but roster wise as well. We'll see what happens for for America. I guess the one last bit of news is the fact that um, America is going to be kind of living in California for the next. Three months from June all the way to August. How do you guys, Brian? You gotta come out here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> kicking. Ridiculous. Like, this is like Mexico. I'll protect you from the blue hair women. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like Mexico <laughs> having like Dallas as their home. It's like now America is just playing at Dignity Park every game. When they come Even out the women. <laughs> Even the yeah, women. Yeah, the, gonna be playing the women's team are also going to be here in the summer as well. I wrote an article on it. On it, it's it's the most bizarre thing that I've ever seen in my life, to have America be so centralized to one state. Um, I don't know if they kind of ran their numbers and are like, "This is the state that gives us the most money, so we're just kind of gonna go with it." Like, I, I doubt I, it. Super tax state, like I doubt it too. <laughs> they could probably yeah. be in 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 Texas and make more Texas, money, or in right. Nevada and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, to be honest, I don't know. It's it's odd, but they specifically chose California for their uh, for their league cup, leagues cup matches, right? Campeón de Campeones was kind of already set in motion. We already knew where that was going to be played at. Um, Isn't it always at that, at that stadium? Yeah, it's always it's it's always been there for like the past five Even the years. The Liga was there. <laughs> Even yeah, the Inter Liga was there too. Was there. I, I I don't know what contract they have, but it's <laughs> yeah. And then obviously the big surprise was the ladies that they were going to be uh, playing here in California as well with the group that they got with this new Summer Cup as well. I know AJ's excited about that one. So very odd, very strange to get so much America in 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 one place. Not just in the United States, but just in one state. Um, so obviously all, all, all California fans are ecstatic about this. Obviously it's big news. I would imagine the rest of the United States was probably thinking, why can't you guys throw a couple games our way? I mean, Atlanta will have America as they go up against Chelsea. That should be an interesting game. Right? And then there's another one, but I think it'll be in Columbus. Don't we play the winner of MLS? Didn't they win? Com 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 oh, correct. Com yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I think we'll, we'll, always, we'll play against Columbus. It's always the MLS home for whatever yeah. reason or non-neutral site. So that's another one. Wow. No, well, that if they choose fair. a neutral site, it's probably going to be California, Brian. You think? <laughs> With the way things are going, yeah. <laughs> Columbus so, is like, okay, we'll, we'll just go there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. But hey, that's, um, I guess, all There's the actually news two things I want to bring up. There's actually all two right, things I want to bring up. So last week, we didn't, you guys didn't talk about uh, the, the, the Eric Sanchez interest and the, how much they value him. I just wanted to see you guys' opinions more with Christian because I know he's kind of on on my <laughs> side when it comes to rating him. But I do think you know I, I want to know how you guys feel if they do purchase him for twelve million. Dude, mm, that's a waste of money. <laughs> you can get three players for that. Yeah, for real, absolutely. Yeah, like literally, yeah, no, that'd be good. <laughs> that'd be a waste. That'd be a, that'd be a really yeah, bad no. waste. Yeah, that's no, terrible. <laughs> do not spend that kind of money. Yeah. Be be smart I, I about agree. it. Then I don't even think uh, a, a a lower 
price is worth it. Like if they were to say eight million, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. No, the most the most is probably five, and I'm hesitating still because I know that contract is going to be very rich as, as well. And the second part, the second question was, what are your uh, opinion on Cabecita's comments of, about about how Baños pretty much kicked them out the club, saying like. He really didn't want to leave, I guess. You know, at least the way he kind of said it, in that he pr- pretty much explains that Banyos just presented the offer and said, "We don't know if it's a purchase or a loan, but we're looking at it and kind of pushed them out the door." How do you guys feel about that? I didn't necessarily take it as Banyos pushing him out the door. I think that's the way he interpreted the situation. But I don't necessarily think that Banyos wanted to get rid of any player if it wasn't suitable for the club. I mean, we kind of know what the price was for Cabecita. I do think that we definitely should have sold him for more. But when you're talking about the wage decrease is substantial. He was up there. He was like top three best players paid. Um, So... Again, I don't necessarily quite think that Banyos was like, hey, like, we don't want you here anymore. And there's an offer here, like, you know, and let's not kid ourselves either. Cabecita was also very, very adamant about wanting to leave because he wasn't getting the minutes that he wanted because he wasn't a starter anymore. So it wasn't like he was like, oh, woe is me. Like, they pushed me out. Like, he was making noise that he wanted to leave as well. So... Mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily look at it as oh, you know, Banyos pushed him out. It was kind of more like, look, these two things kind of went hand in hand and it and it happened, you know, and it is what it is. So grateful for, for the guy and what he did, and I still would love to have him on the team. But like Brian would say, not losing sleep over it. Yeah, I mean he was playing like he got that conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. He, he, there was no effort at all against some of those right last few moments but he then scored for portland so good for him i mean that you know he i'd expect him to score him. Lot, he won like. something with him so good, good luck with him um, right yeah in, in portland for sure yeah because i think i wanted to you know we wanted out he was just trying to save face in the interview christian do you believe that of course uh, i mean I, I think it happens with almost every disgruntled player that leaves a club right just trying to make it seem like it wasn't on him more of the club to whatever it he said he said you know it's it doesn't matter at this point um i think uh, on a personal note um i i, w- I was fine with carosita in his tenure here um you know appreciative of, of everything he did for us when he was playing well the goals he scored um but if it was time to move on it's time to move on and if you weren't willing to fight for a place here and you wanted to leave it's fine by me mm-hmm. i agree and so you have your answers chris the biggest complaint was the the price tag they put on them. We, we lost money in that in that perspective. Yes, in that perspective, we did lose out on that. But like I said, I think it balances out when you look at the wages as well, right? It, it, I think, I don't necessarily think we break even, but we get close to breaking even in that sense. So we'll see what that looks like again in the long run. Um, but yeah, best of luck to Capacita. But all right, gentlemen. Let's uh let's talk the last topic here of the night, which is America versus San Luis. The game to kind of carry us on into the following quarterfinal matchup that we're gonna have against New England Revolution. So this is kind of practice to that Tuesday's game. Christian, how do we come into this game? Obviously, we spoke about the injuries, we spoke about the players that most likely are gonna play in regards to the players that are gonna be out. What is this makeshift starting eleven looking like? Are we playing with a center attacking mid? Are we playing a four three three? What's kind of gonna be going through Jardine's mind? I, I couldn't even tell you. First of all, because I think I did. I think this is a topic we didn't discuss earlier. Is that our center back pairing in Igor and Sebas Casas has played seventy plus minutes today, and you're supposed yeah. to tell me they're supposed to fly back to Mexico, have half a day's rest, and play another ninety on Friday? That just doesn't make sense to me, and I don't think that's going to happen. So I think mm-hmm. now you have to look at your other alternatives, Ramon Juarez, as we were talking and about sadly, earlier. You know, uh, Luis Fuentes was playing center back against Cruz Azul in that friendly. Nestor Araujo, oh, God. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> both both options are not. Can Juarez just play center back by himself? 
I mean, like it's that I don't might know, be so the think, better it's option. Gonna be, it's gonna be extremely interesting. So I, I don't know if I can even give out a, a good starting eleven just because there's so many moving parts to this, and we don't even, we don't know what's going on through Hadini's head. Because on one side we think that he's gonna rest, likes of you know maybe Quinones and Valdez, but who knows? Maybe he'll just throw him out there at at the beginning, and then you know as the game goes along he'll he'll sub them out. You know that's what we normally think, or we normally think that they they won't play just because they're not, but. I guess he knows them better than us, right? And he'll just put them out there in the 11. So I think it's it's kind of complicated to kind of give an 11 right now. Okay, what if I gave you the starting, the starting, uh, the 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 back line and then you work your way up from there? No, oh, Because I think I might have figured it out while you were talking. So I'm going, this is what I think. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going Malagón in goal. Kevin Alvarez on the right. Chicote yeah. Calderón on the left. Mm -hmm. Ramon Juarez. And get this. Israel Reyes as a center back. I can see and that. Then what is what is what does the rest of the team would look like then? It's Nestor Araujo. <laughs> it's gonna be Nestor Araujo. I I would feel like it would be Nestor Araujo too, but uh I'm I just wanna I just wanna pretend like like he's never gonna play it's, for me. It's okay to admit we forgot that he ex he exists. <laughs> has Israel uh, has Israel Reyes played center defensive mid with us yet? No, no. Hmm. I feel like that's just more natural place to be. To be honest, it could be. I don't, I don't, like, I don't, I don't, we, I don't, don't like the right back move. To be honest, personally, but yeah, no, obviously, either. you know, yeah, no. I think that was a failed project for yeah, sure. Yeah. So then where do we go in the midfield then from that point on? Definitely Richard Sanchez and Naveda. But I guess at that point, you know, we don't have a third one. If you, don't, you, don't play, play, you don't play Jonah? I think they do play Jonah. I, I think they play I Jonah. Would, but I, do. I thought he had a knock. No, Jonah doesn't have a knock. No. Oh, There's so, so many, okay, you just fine. lose count. <laughs> yeah, I, bro, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so if, if Jonah's healthy... Then you just play John Anaveda and Richard then. Yeah, that's it. I wouldn't. You play with that. I wouldn't. And I think San oh no, Sanders can't play. <laughs> right. Nope. Oh, damn, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's why I think, yeah, that's that's probably your best midfielder <laughs> options. And then I think everyone knows on the right. Option at this point, I guess. Yeah, that's why. Unless you're going to put Miguel Ramirez there. I mean, he showed promising signs, but I don't think enough for him to merit a start. Probably come off the bench. Um... On the right, everyone's Javido. favorite Dutchman, Javido, <laughs> who is starting to irritate me because he walks way too much. Way too much. I was about to say that. Do you guys agree that he reminds you of Roger Martinez? Because I don't agree to that yes. narrative, but I saw a lot of people say that. You really do see that? Yes. He's so, so lazy sometimes, off the ball. But it's not because he wants to be, because that's how he is, I think. That's just his style of play because... In an instant, he just turns up the pace by like sixty, and it's just like that's crazy, like absolutely wild. But I, I think that's just his demeanor, the way that he is I, since he arrived. I think so. I, again, it's frustrating, but if he can perform, then who am I to judge, right? So, Brian's most likely going to be on the left hand side, and then of course, since Henry is fine, wait, 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 wait. you start Henry. Wait, you have you have Brian, even though he he's gonna be flying that many too. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I think I think I put Chava Reyes there. Chava Reyes. How many minutes did How many minutes did Brian get? I'll tell you right now. Actually, I don't know, but they hated him. They, <laughs> I just saw hate, hate comments. That's all I like, saw. So. He got forty-five. He started. Yeah, he's fine. He starts. But you don't think the the flight like that's a lot of. Hours. I think Reyes starts to be honest, personal. I, I think, think I, I think I go Chava Reyes too. Yeah, Brian maybe second half, fifteen minutes here and there. Because Brian's probably I, well, no, Quinones might be ready for. Well, you might have to play Quinones as a cam for, against New England, know. so you might need to give Brian minutes to get ready for that. Oh, I don't know. This is we are we are slim pickings here. I thought we had depth, yeah. gentlemen. What if, what was I talking about at the beginning of the podcast? <laughs> what? Well, I, you know, it was Cavarillas. I was not my frustration. <laughs> Man, you, you this is terrible. Oh wait, no, he's not, he's not with us. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. 
All right. Well, with this and, makeshift and you see, starting at eleven. Now you see uh-huh. why I wanted to like start putting these like, academy players. If they stink, bro, who cares, right? Who like you're, you're gonna get rid of them either way. Like who cares? But if they're good, you at least found someone that you could put for twenty five minutes, like or whatever. Like that. That's my my issue with these games. And even like with the national team, I don't think you guys understand what I thought about national team. But when you have these type of games, and it's like. We're going to take all these important players from all these clubs, and if they get injured, who cares? We're going to sell all these tickets. Like, It's the same thing with, with America and these tours. Bro, there's no need to put these. I understand, bro. I, I hear the g- little girls or the girls, whatever. I don't know how old they are, but they're screaming, Kevin Alvarez. I understand, bro. I get it. Like, you, there, there's, there's fanboys and fangirls out there that want to see these certain players. But, hey, bro, I'm not in the business of, of – individual players being having their own fan clubs, whatever. I'm here for championships. And if, if like, like if they're not a hundred by Tuesday, when, when is the game? Tuesday, right? Yeah. Like, we're going to have a very sloppy, ugly game. Like I'm not here for that. Like, no, we need, we, what we need is closer to a hundred or don't risk them because yes, this champions cup thing is important, but it's not like, that's not the only thing we're chasing either. You know, like, Injuries happen, and now we don't we lose out on both, and that's what my whole beef with the whole friendly thing. It just there's no need if, if you put them like like Brian said, put them in the end of the game, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. Who cares, bro? You think I'm losing sleep because I lost to Cruz Azul in a in a random Sunday? Like I didn't even watch the game. You know, like exactly like there's people that don't even watch it. They're probably like, man, I'm going to church. It's Sunday. Like I don't care. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Like you get yeah. me? Like, hey, like Dylan I said, you. I could rant for an hour when I'm upset. And, uh, I'll go off, but my point is, it's just, it's just, at some point, you gotta play these young players. And like I said, if they suck, okay, whatever. They're, they're probably gonna go play elsewhere next year. But if they're good, cool. We got someone that could come in and plug in quick. Like, hey, bro, we got all this schedule. Like. Plug them in. If you do bad, oh well. But if you do good, cool. We we'll sell you for ten million later on. Whatever you know, like I just don't see the point of just always having to put these starters and then we get injuries and oh my god, we're surprised. Like well, I'm not surprised. Like this is the reason I'm always complaining about this. <laughs> well, it's, it, remember we played like a bunch of Euro teams. I think it was 2022. Yep. And then I was like, wait, we're playing a ton of youth 23. What for like? 55 minutes and I'm like they're playing pretty good I mean like and they look good they exactly like, and then they disappear but then we play this random game Reyes. yeah and then yeah I'm like, Reyes. we play these random games in the middle of the season against another Mexican league team and we're playing almost the strongest 11 that doesn't make yeah. any sense to me hey we'll play Chelsea and put a U20 out there but I know yeah we gotta, we gotta go hard against Cruz as well you know, <laughs> it, it's like, oh, we're hopeful these European teams are gonna buy them, and then it's like they don't even care because they're playing in the uh, San Francisco Giants baseball stadium. Like they don't care. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like AP Junior agrees with you, Chris. He said he didn't care for the game at all, and you know, he went to church and went to go play his own game. He said, "I don't got time for Toragila." But I mean, you guys make look. The argument is there, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say you guys are wrong. I agree with you guys. I think it was premature, and I was going into that game thinking we're gonna see a lot of youngsters. This is great. This is a great chance for them to kind of get their opportunity. And well, now we're in the pickle that we are, but can't turn back time. And now we got to look ahead into the San Luis game and think, okay, what can we do here to salvage? Brian, a point, or is it more than doable to get all three points in this one? Because I mean. We kind of all were throwing the towel in against Tijuana, and we somehow managed to get three points with a C team. Well, that too, in the, in the Tigres game, I thought we were, I was like looking at that lineup, I was like, uh, yeah, we're at home, but I, I don't think we're going to get anything out of that. There was three points there. So um, three points is definitely a, you know obtainable. So I wouldn't write that off. My whole thing is I'm okay with a draw at the end of the day. If everyone's healthy, there's still good enough rhythm. But no, like there, there's three points. I, I think even even though our lineup is sketchy and a little weird, and who's going to play midfield or not, it, it's <laughs> there's still enough quality to get three. 
Um, you can't yeah. rule, you don't want to rule that out and, or just ship the game in early. So I think three points is still available, but I'm not losing sleep over a point either. So I like it. You guys agree with that or have a different mindset? I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. It, we're going to be frustrated regardless. We're going to come oh, and talk this about the crappiest, boring. This game is not going to go like any other bit. It's, this game is going to be boring. Boring, and you know what? It's gonna mistakes, be a lot of mid passes. Just be ready for mm-hmm. all of that. It's gonna be a perfect prime Liga Mekis Friday night match. Let's just oh, put God. it that way. <laughs> the most Friday night esque game yeah. possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, I'm I'm looking at this game as like I mentioned, an opportunity for these rotation players that are gonna have to step in against New England to get some minutes under their, uh, under their belt and get back into the rhythm of things, and for the starters to again jump back into the action of it all um and rest players that need to get rested that could potentially feature against new england on on tuesday because look that travel from mexico city to to boston is not going to be uh a light (laughs) a light flight so it's it's going to be some wear and tear i haven't looked at the weather just yet as to what that's going to be looking like for for tuesday but i am i'm assuming it's going to be that case right it's going to be not Mexico City weather. I mean, unless it rains. If it rains, I think we'll be... Um, Better not rain. We'll be at home. <laughs> yeah, we'll be practically at home. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's not going to rain. It's going to be nice 46 degree weather. So we'll see how that pans out for America. But we'll see. We'll absolutely see there. Um, well, I guess I'll ask for your guys' prediction. Brian, what are you going with prediction-wise for, for the game on Friday? As much as I would hate to say, because it'd be so boring, zero zero. Oof! Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> a snooze fest one, right there. Good luck, AJ, staying up for that one. Um, oh boy, that would be that. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, going one nothing. I like it. Three points, clean sheet. Can't complain. Chris, yeah, I, I'm going one zero. Also, I think. I'm looking at the table, and they're not a good team either. I know it's different when they play against us, right? But I think it's, it's, it's Jardine against his uh, former assistant, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's his former assistant. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's going to be very close just for that fact, and I think it's going to be very similar to the to the Cholos game week one. Very similar. And I and I have the same guy scoring from that Cholos game in this game. I think Chavarri scores because I think, think he's just one of those players where that randomly shows up. And I think this is the type of game to to just score. All right, one I zero. like it. AP Junior going with a one-one draw. Ricardo going three-one with Javido double. That's adventurous. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. I'd love that to be honest. Well, I'm gonna one up Ricardo here. I'm going three zero. Oh, well, here he goes. From where? I don't know. I just have it. I just feel it. It's just something about a Friday night game at the Azteca against San Luis. Screams the last three zero for me. Played Friday night at the Azteca. Oof! It's been it's been a while. That's a, That's a trivia great question, trivia huh? question. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna tell you that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, am I being delusional? Probably, but I think yes. someone had to be on the podcast today and no one else wanted to step up, so I thought might as well take the advantage. At the end of the day, regardless, one zero, three zero, three points is vital for your season. Like, Christian, you mentioned that you're coming to the nitty-gritty of your season and these points are like gold, especially when things are so tight at the top, right? Yeah, we're three points away from Monterrey, but, you know, Tigres is right behind us as well. Like, there's not much wiggle room to kind of drop points when you're talking about potentially trying to secure that top four spot. So it's not anything to take lightly. So this is a game in where you think America needs to have all three points just because of the situation we're in regarding the, um, the injuries is where we're kind of thinking, okay, as long as we get some rest and as long as some of these players are, are healthy for the upcoming matches, then we're fine because I'm looking at next week against Toluca. That's going to be one of those matches and where, okay, you need to have 
everyone that is available at your disposal because that's, again, a three-pointer that you cannot um, kind of throw away. So hopefully we grind it out. We get the three points. Um, but if worst-case scenario comes, we get that draw because of the makeshift starting 11. Pray and hope some results go our way. And like Brian said, we're not losing any sleep. And then we start focus on on the quarterfinals. So... We'll see. It'll be an interesting one. But make sure you guys follow us over on Twitter. We'll keep you guys up to date with everything going on with Las Aguilas and America and everything going on in regards to that matchup. Um, should be interesting. And then, of course, we'll get you guys ready for the game against New England Revolution, the quarterfinals. That one's going to be interesting. That one's going to be fun. Brian, you won't be here, unfortunately. Um, you're going off on a business trip regarding the podcast and our funds that somehow magically disappeared. Um I just want your prediction for the game against New England. What are you uh what are you looking forward to? What what do you think is America capable of doing away at Gillette Stadium? Well, I gotta be honest. Um, I don't think it's gonna be easy. I don't think it's gonna be easy at all. Um, they have a pretty physical defense from what I've seen. Especially there was a guy, I think his name's Farrell, who's a center back, really strong guy against Pumas. He was really good against them. Now Pumas advanced but at home in new england they stifled pumas so i don't think it's going to be easy now if we get more healthy i still think america can pull out a win but it's not going to be a high scoring game in my opinion all right well we look forward to seeing what that is come next week on tuesday chris you're putting your finger up what's up i don't know if i'm gonna be here either so i'm gonna say this now I hope we win by robbery because I'm a Raiders fan and the Patriots play there. And there's a certain tough rule that <laughs> screwed us over. So I hope we win by robbery. That's all I'm going to say. And then I know Christian agrees with me because he's a Jets fan. So the <laughs> hatred is very similar uh, from us. <laughs> well, let's see. We'll see if that's the case then. Um, but yeah, we will be back next week to talk uh, Club America and get you guys caught up with that. We're actually going to have some guests from New uh, New England Revolution uh, experts to come and talk to us in regards to that game as well. So looking forward to that. Going to have the guys on from uh, Revolution Recap on and uh, looking forward to talking Club America and I won't New England be here Revolution. Either. You won't be here either? Is no one going to show up? It's just going to be me against the New England Revolution guys? I don't Depends know if I'll be here or not. But what day is it? Monday? Say that. Yeah, it's going to be Monday. Ooh, oh, yeah, I'm, out on the, I'm unfortunately out. I know you're gone, Brian. We spoke about it earlier. <laughs> I know, but I was like, I was like double checking in my, I was double checking in my head and I was like, maybe, maybe I'll be okay. No, can't do it. No, uh, no that's I, fine. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best because I need to, I need some insider. So what, I, what, what I'm going to expect. When I'm, that's when right. I'm Christian was going to be at the oh, game too. So, oh, that's, that's right. That's right. Okay. So he needs. I'm gonna come in with the Raiders jersey if I'm here. There's no like. It's fine. It's fine. It's gonna blend in with the background, anyways. Can't see anything. I'm gonna wear a white one. (laughs) (laughs) All right, then. Well, I think that should wrap it up for us. Like I said, we'll be back next week to talk all things Club America ahead of the Concacaf Champions Cup, gentlemen. It's always it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Brian, for making the time. Thank you, Christian, and thank you, Chris. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your guys' night. Have a wonderful time. Take care, and as always. Arriba en América. Good night.